Today's March 4th, 2018, and I wanted to record Dad with some of his stories and have it on record. So, Dad, if you would um, tell us what your first job was. Okay, my first first job that I got, like, let's say a payroll out of, from payroll. I, of course, did a lot of odd jobs working on people's yards and mowing grass and things of that nature. But one of the jobs I had was to, I was a newspaper boy for the uh, Triangle Trailer Court where I was raised uh, for a few years of my life. And where's uh, that? Tra and that's on 109 Bypass in Anderson uh, at the north end of it near Hartman <clears throat> Road. It's now just uh, went down to nothing. A few little trailers left in there. Mobile homes. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, at the time it was thriving. It had uh, had about 31 spots in there, I believe. 31 trailers, or mobile homes. Of various sizes and and uh, but I had a paper route in there and uh, I I passed the the bulletin it was an evening paper and uh, it was a Herald Bulletin office uptown Anderson it was the bulletin part of the paper it was an evening paper like I say I passed that around to different people and collected off of them uh, uh, once a month. So I got paid every month. month. Man, how'd you and, wait that long? <laughs> oh, it was it was a lot of money. It was uh, <clears throat> in one month I had like thirty customers, and in one month I made eight dollars and twenty cents. Hmm. So it was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back then. Yeah, <laughs> sure. It wasn't either back then. <laughs> it wasn't. Okay. It wasn't even a lot of money then. <laughs> I remember the first thing I bought with it was a watch. I bought a wrist watch, and my sister, bless her heart, older sister, ten years older than me. Uh, she would help me collect the money because mm -hmm. I was pretty new at that stuff. Yeah. And uh, huh. so anyway, I bought a watch with it. Then uh, and then um, I worked also after that. I worked at uh, at the Paramount Theater in Anderson, Indiana, for a guy named Buddy Patterson. And uh, Buddy was my boss. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. we made uh, actually made fifty cents an hour, which was peanuts. I got twenty five, twenty two dollars and fifty cents a week. I think is what I made there, about on the average. What year would that been? Got a check, a check uh, every two weeks. And of course, I was in high school, okay. and that was pretty good money. High school, yeah. spending money. It was during high school, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of good times up there. Uh, Paramount Theater was just booming and the city, the mall wasn't there yet and the city was full of people all the time and it was just a booming place. Hmm. Uh, I was, Where did you, let's see, did you have your driver's license then? No. Uh, because your your mother, uh, I was dating her, actually playing basketball with her brother Gary. Mm -hmm. That's how I met your mother, and we were both working at the Paramount, me and Gary. Interesting, okay. And a couple of neighborhood friends there, mm -hmm. a guy named Bob Smitherman, and Gary and I and Buddy Patterson, we all were the four guys that worked there. We were actually, uh, we chased the stock, let's call it, or we, we would actually stock the candy room and uh, make popcorn and fill the Coke machines. Back then you had a gallon of Coke that you put in a machine and you'd mix it. And then mm -hmm. you had seltzer water in one part and syrup in the other, and they would come into your cup and mix in the cup. And it was a milk uh, or a, a syrupy uh, Coke mixture. Mm -hmm. But uh, it tasted like a fountain Coke that way, like you would have gotten in a drugstore or somewhere where they had a fountain. But uh, we did that and we also ushered. We course we were the bouncers we called us we were the ones that kicked people out that weren't playing by the rules um mm -hmm. and i remember in one day one time i so had, was gary oh, was gary driving you no that was where i was going to get to gary's and and your mother uh, her mom and dad her mother and dad gary of course being her brother uh they would, uh, their, mo off. their mother would drop us off oh, okay. or come and pick us up. <clears throat> and again, that's how I got to be around your mother and be mm -hmm. with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, So what uh, were you going to say before I, uh, I asked that? Well, I was going to tell you yeah. to do this being with Gary and meeting your mom. Yeah. Uh, uh, I chased her till she caught me. 
<laughs> That's kind of a statement that uh, everybody uses once in a while. We actually were boyfriend, girlfriend from the time she was about 14, and I was, I would have been about 15 and a half, 16 maybe, and uh, now we've been married 51, going on 51 years now. But that was a good old time. We rode to work in a 61 Chevy <clears throat> and uh, got to know her mom and dad and things led, one thing led to another. And uh, we ended up getting married in 1967 on July the 14th. But mm -hmm. prior to that, I worked with Gary, her brother, and I. We went to uh, work for John Newby, who had the wheel horse dealership in town. Mm -hmm. And we built garden tractors out of the crate and set them up for sale. We sold some, we delivered a lot of them, and worked there and did mechanic work, and learned a lot about small engine repair. Where was Newbies located? That was on the 10th? 10th and Range Line in Anderson. Hmm. Mm -hmm. The old garage is still there, but it's, now it's a barn that people have there on their property that, that use it for a barn. Okay. But uh, huh. we put together some beautiful red tractors over the years. Wheel horse? Wheel horse tractors. Wheel horse. Any other? Make uh, or model? Uh, they, they, had, they had some, uh, uh, let's see, what was the other one? We sold chainsaws, Pull, Pullen and McCullough chainsaws. Okay. No kidding, yeah. And, hmm. um, but Wheel Horse was his main dealership. Yeah, yeah, that, was, okay. yeah that was all we, all another company there in town, just down the street, did what was called the Simplicity. That was another lawnmower mm -hmm. brand. Right. And we were always uh, in competition with them. For sales as well as uh, uh, one thing about the simplicity they called it simple but it was hard to work on and the wheel horse was much easier to work on hmm. <coughs> excuse yeah, me yeah That's but uh, we we had some uh, good times there and uh, grateful for John giving me a job there John Newby he just now passed away not long ago and uh, hmm. Let's see, I went from there to uh, General Motors in 1966. Mm. I got hired on there. Uh, I was, let's see what I just, let's see what I, just turning 18, would have been, I would have been 17, maybe 18, I can't recall. But anyways, hired in there, yeah, I was 18 years old. And you were just looking at your payroll log Yes. The other day. Yeah, I think I started out at... We uh, looked at it. $2.50, $2.51 or somewhere in there, two seventy something like that. In 1966. Less than $3 in yeah. 1966. And mm -hmm. that was a big jump in pay from where I've been making 50 cents an hour, sure. which was pretty good money. Really. Sure. Gasoline was 23 cents a gallon. Wow. I hate to admit it, I'm getting old. <laughs> you look back, that's been a long time ago. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. loaf of bread was like 35 cents. Uh, mm. quart of milk, I remember being 31 cents. So, mm. but anyway, um, what plant did you start in? Uh, plant six. Plant six. And I ended up in every plant, all of them. Right. There, was, there was two, four, six, eight, seven, uh, 10, 11, I'm naming them based on where they were located uh, in comparison to one another. Uh, 10 and 11 were together. Then uh, plant 3, plant 20, and plant 1. That was another one. And <coughs> plant 16, and there was a, a dock job at each plant. And I ended up getting on the dock work and did uh, what they call production control. In my latter years, my last six years were there to drive trucks, fork trucks, and and ship and receive all the equipment in and out. Um, during my time there, I did uh, work as a supervisor in Plant 8 for six months in, uh, I think it was 1977. And uh, due to that, they, they stopped your seniority, which is what you use to gain other jobs. Mm -hmm. If you're there long enough, you get better job by saying, hey, I'm I got more time than this guy, and I'd like that job. So you huh. would get better jobs. So I'd lost that, and I ended up going right back to where I was when I hired in on some of the jobs that were not so desirable. Yeah. And that was a little frustrating. But it all worked out. Now I'm retired. I've been yeah. out there since 1996. This is 2018. So uh, 
I've done real well. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lord bless me. All right. What was your first car that you uh, purchased? Uh, first car, well, I could back or, up. Or first car that was given to yeah, you or my, whatever. My dad bought my first car for mm-hmm. me. Okay. So, better start there, right. I guess. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the, uh, that was a 1956 Chevy two-door Bel Air. Hmm. A real nice car, turquoise and white, beautiful car. Believe it or not, it cost three hundred ninety-five dollars. Good, and uh, of course it was used. That was within nineteen. Let's see, that was a fifty-six, and it was in the year of nineteen sixty-five, maybe sixty-four, somewhere in there. So it was a used car, but still real nice, and mm. I drove it forever. And uh, did you say inline six? No, it was a two eighty-three, two sixty-five, two sixty-five, two sixty-five, two barrel. First uh, small block Chevy V8 that came out, Mm -hmm. and it came out in 1955, and that was the second year for it, 1956. And Mm -hmm. later years they grew bigger and bigger and stronger, but that was the first V8 in Chevy. Uh, But my very first car, actually, well, that was my very first car, but my, uh, what would you call it, the oldest car. How would you put that? Anyway, the one that I got after that was a 1953 Ford. Hmm. It was a two-door coupe with no back seat. That was the way it came from the factory. No kidding. No back no seat. No back seat. It's called a coupe. Hmm. And anyway, that was the, the oldest car I ever owned. Right. What color was it? Well, it was originally kind of a... <laughs> Uh, flesh color, like really? flesh, no like, like yeah, flesh like color, beige, a little if bit. If you look beige. at the crayon in the Crayola oh, box, right. that they got one that's called yeah. flesh. Yeah, that's the color, kind of a peachy, mm-hmm. orangey, light mm-hmm. colored shade. But it was that color with mm-hmm. cream, mm-hmm. and I took a quart of black paint, thinned it down real thin, and rolled a black paint on that car. And rolled the paint on it to mm-hmm. paint that car black with a roller. With a roller. Uh-huh. And we did this in my my friend's gr- dad's garage, <laughs> and his dad came home from work in a newer car, <laughs> and it was raining. Oh no! And he ordered us to get that car out of his garage. He wanted to put his new car in the out of the rain. Well, the paint wasn't dry, and I backed it out in the rain, and it looked like wrinkle paint. Oh no! It looked really smooth until then. Until then, and it, was, oh, it looked like. Noga hide or leather, yeah, right? <laughs> it had all kind of bubbles in it. Wow! But that was that story. A lot of others too. Yeah. Huh. So, um, let's see. What car did you and Mom date in? Well, the '56 Chevy. Okay. For one. Uh, then I got a. Uh, at that time, the next car I got was a 1960 Chevy convertible. No. Uh, black, uh, real nice car, and that would have been in 1965, 66. No, was that Mommy. was that bought used or was it? Yeah, I bought, bought it used. I traded that '56 mm-hmm. in on it. It was a thousand ninety five dollars huh. at a used lot or a used car lot. Yeah, there in Anderson. In Anderson, no kidding. Yeah, and I had traded it in, and the guy who appraised my trade in. Uh huh. Uh, Which, what was that? What 56. Was, was it 56, yeah. 56 Bel Air. He appraised it as a trade for this moving up for four years newer to a 60 show. Oh, sure. When I went back to trade the car the next day, I had taken all the new tires off of it to put on my 60 after he'd appraised it with them on there. And oh. I, being young enough and just right. wasn't thinking... <laughs> he about had a fit when I pulled in with them bad tires and wanted to keep my new ones. Oh, yeah. And I said, well, I bought those, and I'm going to keep them. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he really got and upset. He, no kidding. Well, he knew my parents. Uh-huh. And he just took it. Knowing their friendship, he didn't want to hurt it any, mm-hmm. so he allowed me to go ahead and do it. Uh-huh. It didn't cost me. Yeah. But I see nowadays and now times, uh, you know, that would be, you just don't do that. Yeah. But I, at the time, I didn't know I was doing anything sure. wrong. I sure. just felt like it was okay. Exactly. 